So uh, what I will do is I will explain how we are commercializing one of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, principles that Elsa Madrid explained to you. And um, the thing about pulling in the pessimism is, you know, that's just a word I use to explain realism. Because this uh, whole area of uh, immune oncology is developing very fast. There are three approved drugs on the market now uh, based on immune oncology principles. And there is, to the way I see it, almost a hype in the whole field. So I think there is a need for some more realism and pull things down a little bit. And then I will explain how I use that realism, or actually some sort of pessimism, uh, in communication with investors. And how I think that is an efficient way to finance and to build the company. First, I'll explain a little bit more about the technology. Uh, Elsa Marit, actually, she went through the details. Uh, like we said, our technology comes from the lab where Elsa Marit works, and actually her lab is doing all the lab work in our clinical trials at the moment. Uh, the company was established in 2011, and the major owners are well-known investors in uh, Norway, Jelsten Holding, uh, Invento, uh, the uh, tech transfer office of the University of Oslo, uh, the Norwegian Radium Hospital Research Foundation, they went together and they started the company. Uh, a lot of the absolutely necessary work, the formal establishment of the company, to produce the vaccine, to start doing the documentation and to start to plan clinical trials was done by Audun Tornes, sitting up there, uh, as an employee in Invento. And then I was hired in mid-2012. And then we have been gradually building the staff to be able to, uh, to uh, meet the uh, demands and the planning of uh, clinical trials. Um, uh, about a year ago now, we raised uh, 45 million kroner, and we got uh, Kanika, Stan Erik Hagen, and uh, Sunt, which is also a large invest investor in Norway, on board in the company. Uh, and in uh, Q4, end of this year, we will be uh, 11 employees, and including our own lab. Now, a little bit about the technology, a little more than what, uh, what uh, Elsa Marit said. We, we have a telomerase-based vaccine, which means telomerase is an enzyme essential to the cancer cells, and it sort of gives them the, the ability for endless division. So the cancer cells are totally dependent on them, and most cancer cells have them. If they stop expressing and having telomerase, they are no longer cancer cells. So in that respect, it's an ideal target. And uh, you see a familiar face here. That's Elsa Marit, and this is Gustav Gerdenach. And uh, on the Marit Rasmussen, they are the three inventors of, uh, of uh, our vaccine. Uh, long story short, or short story short, uh, we have started um, uh, three clinical trials. Uh, one is now finished and we are reporting it these days, and that's in, um, in um, prostate cancer. Uh, and there we have been able to start uh, treating the patients early, right after they're diagnosed. And we're giving the vaccine together with a regular treatment that these patients would receive. And that's the trial that we're reporting now. And we, uh, what we know is that 80% of the patients, they get uh, the immune cells that we are expecting. They get T cells directed towards cells expressing telomerase. And we also see some uh, clinical signs, but we will look more into that when we are doing the actual report and doing the statistics. Then we have one similar trial in uh, lung cancer. Uh, that's, uh, we're close to finishing the recruitment, but there we are treating patients with very advanced disease, and for non-medicals, advanced disease means they're really sick. It's late, they've tried all treatments. It's late stage disease. And then we have started a third trial, which is uh, uh, to us and other people watching us, very exciting. And in that trial, we're combining two of the principles that Elsa Marit explained to you. She showed you the T cell and the tumor cell with the PD-1, PDL one interaction, the interaction that switches off the T cell. Uh, there are two approved drugs now that block that interaction that keeps the T cells going and stimulate the immune system. The challenge with that treatment is that 
uh, there is a fairly low response rate. Uh, 20 to 40 percent of the patients respond, the others don't. Uh, there is a reason to believe that non if you do not have any part of your immune system activated against the tumor cells, nothing happens when you take off the brakes. So combining a vaccine and one of these checkpoint inhibitors, as, as they're called, is a very intriguing principle. And we have started a clinical trial to look at that, where we combine uh, Yarvoi, ipilimumab, from bristol myers Squibb with our vaccine in uh, patients with uh, advanced melanoma. And that trial is ongoing, and we're halfway through recruiting. And then we have some ongoing research collaboration uh, with, uh, we're discussing with Big Pharma to start a phase 2B3 trial. Uh, we have uh, collaboration with the uh, NCI, the National Cancer Institute in the US, and they asked for access to our vaccine for testing it in prophylactic vaccines, cancer vaccines. And that's for very high risk patients, patients that you are quite sure they will develop cancer if nothing is being done. And then they are testing in animal models and they want it. One, our vaccine is one of the, uh, the candidates that they're testing. And then we also have some other uh, cooperations with small biotech companies. And we have also taken a uh, leap and we have, uh, we're establishing these days commercial scale and grade production. So we have basically unlimited amount of vaccine available and that's on. And that will be uh, ready in uh, late this year, beginning of next year. So, are we a success? There's so much talk about success. Well, the simple answer to that is we don't know yet. Uh, success to us means that what we're doing will benefit patients, and we don't know yet. We will see that from the trials that we're planning. It's that short. Are the stakeholders happy? And by stakeholders, I mean investors, inventors, employees, their families, public grants, anyone watching us that have expectations towards us. Do they view us as successful? And this is where I'm starting to touch on the pessimism. And here is one of my points, is how they view us, how the, your, the environment, your investors, everyone views you, depends on what happens as compared to what they expected. And sometimes it's a lot easier to do something with expectations than with what actually happens, because that's nature, that's what's the biology, the biological uh, uh, processes that lies behind the effects of the vaccine or no effects of the vaccine like this. And there's, our job is to elucidate that, to find out how it works. And then to start to make major points of how effectful this can be or will be and like that is pure speculations. We don't know anything about that until we have the trial results and until we have done much more lab work to look at the, uh, uh, and get more details on the technology. Well, pessimism is a success factor. Well, fact, fact is that most biotechs don't succeed. That's the way it is. It's actually very few that succeed. And then when I, I, I can, refer the, the, uh, the uh, first conversation I had with Björn Rune Jelsten when he asked me to start as the CEO. I came into the room, presented ourselves, and I said, before we sort of start the uh, discussion or the interview, um, please tell me why you are a serious, well-known, well-respected, and very good investor. Why on earth are you investing in something that has 95% probability of not succeeding? And then he said, well, before I answer your question, you tell me why you, you have a good job in a large company, doing well, why are you at all sitting here talking to me? And my response was, well, um, I see the possibilities in this technology. And if it succeeds just a little, and I didn't join it when I had the possibility, I will regret it the rest of my life. And he says, same for me. So that's, that's the story. We are well aware of the risks involved in this. And then the point is don't create too much expectations, which is of course a balance when you're trying to attract investors. You have to sort of make them want to invest in you, but 
you know, do it by being realistic and communicate in a realistic way. And of course the, the downside of creating expectations is that they tend to backfire on you. And to me this is perhaps, I'm not saying that this is really happening now, but the whole environment in immuno-oncology especially that I know well, this field in Norway, is uh, I think we might be creating too much expectations and we're good at attracting investors on those expectations, but it won't last long if we go further and we don't you know, keep things down to earth. If anyone asks me, do you really think that you're going to create a cancer treatment that can treat almost all cancers without any side effects? And I said, good heavens, no. I don't believe that we will do that. But I do believe that having technology that can activate the immune system will have some place in immuno-oncology and in cancer treatment in the future. When you communicate, you stick to facts. Don't speculate and don't, don't give your speculations to investors because it's very hard for someone that no, don't know your field to evaluate the truth and the integrity of what you're saying. So stick to the facts. And make stakeholders well aware of downside pitfalls, difficulties, dangers and risks connected to what you're doing and what they're doing when they're coming in with the money. And I have sort of this test in my head if I want to, uh, talking to an investor or a uh, perhaps future employee, something I really want to attract into the company like that, and I get this, uh, maybe I shouldn't say that, this is negative, then to me that's a sign, say it. Be honest and go forth and say exactly the way you see things. The positive facts, like Elsa Marit's presentation, the possibilities that lie in this uh, technology almost speaks for itself. You don't even have to be, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, have much knowledge in medicine or biology to understand it. It's a new treatment. We know it works. We have three approved drugs, and the principles are working. And that sort of speaks for itself. That you know puts, you know, your audience in the right mindset from the start. And what I say is that evidence-based pessimism creates integrity. And integrity is not something that you have because it's a good business point. Integrity has value by itself. And I think I'll end with that slide. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. When I see that last, uh, last um, slide, I would say, imagine. imagine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, when, when you start off saying you're a pessimistic CEO, CEO from a startup immunotherapy company, I think everybody is listening. So that's, that's a good start. That was the point of saying it. Yeah, exactly. I understand yeah. that very well. Yeah. So this risk-reward thinking is something that I think is worth thinking of. And um, what you do and your team is to b try to build business on really top-notch research. And I'm saying this, being employed by the Research Council, we have really been <laughs> <laughs> funding around this. And, and I think maybe uh, I, this is more a question to you, uh, but also than a comment, so to say. There is a relatively robust ecosystem around this company now. Yeah. How much of a selling point is that for your case and your partners? That's one question. And the next one, when you're talking about telomerase, when that's important for cell aging and body aging, can you also cure age, not only cure cancer? OK, I'll, I'll take the um, first question first. Of course, um, when attracting private investors, uh, having the, uh, they know that the uh, Research Council and uh, other, you know, very competent. They have had their eyes on us and they're approved us. That sort of makes it uh, not necessary for them to, you know, to, to do, uh, to, to, to go in depth. Other people with competence have done that before them. But I would say even further, if you, if you go into a collaboration with a big pharma to get their stamp of approval on you is also, you know, it's the same thing. It's, you know, the, the thing is that people outside with no 
real business interest in you, have looked at you and saying you're doing well, you're thinking along the right lines and like that, so like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely an asset for us. Uh, second question is, can we also do something about aging? Uh, I'm, all, I'm glad you asked that question because it sort of, sort of um, make, gives me the possibility to explain the principle of what we're doing. And if you understand the principle of what you're doing, the answer will be obvious, definitely not. Because we are not manipulating telomerase as such. What we're doing is we are making the immune system, we're manipulating immune cells, not telomerase. So what, what we're doing is we're making the immune system able to recognize and kill cells expressing telomerase. We're not touching, that's, to us, that's telomerase is just you know, the, 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 the flag that the cells hold out saying that we're cancer cells. So telomerase, you know, the function of telomerase in our context is almost irrelevant. It's relevant in the sense that it makes our vaccine uh, universal and essential to the, to, the, uh, to the cells. But telomerase and the function of telomerase is sort of irrelevant. I understand that. It's yeah. just testing do we me. Gain, do we gain knowledge here yeah. that could be of importance for thinking also Imagine. Yeah, they, they're, imagine. yeah, imagine, yeah. <laughs> but there are other people that are, other, other companies and other uh, academic institutions looking at how to block telomerase in itself as a targeted cancer drug. But that's a totally different principle from what we're doing. I just said that we don't, we, we're not targeting telomerase, we're targeting cells or we're targeting the immune system. So I'd like to comment from the point of view of, of an investor, <laughs> uh, an investor who, d who does not invest in this area. I, I invest in, in IT. And I can perfectly relate to everything you say from, from the point of view that you are speaking. Because you are in an area where you solve really, really hard problems, but you know that if you solve it, there is a market. So um, based on that, I can totally uh, sympathize with your attitude, and I think the pessimistic attitude is, is, a, is a good selling point. Uh, I would not generalize it very much beyond that, because we need entrepreneurs who are optimists and visionaries, yeah. uh, who also speak the truth. But um, our, our challenge from, from a more IT point of, of view, or uh, e-commerce, uh, social media, is, is more, is there a market? Uh, and the problem may be hard or not so hard, but is there a market? And then we need people who believe that there is a market and that they, and that they can solve it. So it's just a comment, but I, I can totally sympathize with what you say. One small minor point. Uh, you have attracted investors who have personal reasons for being interested in what you do. Uh, that's a rather subtle point, but I think it's uh, an important point. I, I can comment on the last one because they have commented that themselves. And uh, what they said was uh, when we went into this with uh, not so much money, in what it was an uh, investment done by the heart, but now it's moved to the head. 